All right, today we are going to be talking about economics with Martin Armstrong. Stay with us. Well, hello everyone. Welcome to the beginning of the last days. My name is Laura Lynn Tatter Thompson, and what a show we have for you today. We are always interested in what Martin Armstrong and his computer are going to tell us about the collapse of mankind, and uh, or maybe just you know the economics, uh, economic collapse of of the world. It's not looking good right now, but it's all okay. We're going to get through it together. Um, you know that I love to read from my dad's Bible. I miss him. It's been uh, just over two years, and I opened up today. Malachi is a book that kind of speaks about um, finances, so I thought maybe I'd find something that my dad had underlined there about finances. But in, in fact, I, I actually found uh, this verse that he had uh, made a note of. So he says, Then they that feared the Lord spake often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it, and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. So there's a book that we don't have access to right now that keeps track of those that fear the Lord. I hope you're in the book. I personally am afraid of God. Be afraid, be very afraid. I'm afraid of him being angry at me or, or uh, you know, disciplining me. Um, but here's what I'm not afraid of, and here's what I know for absolute sure. He absolutely adores me. He loves me. He's got me in the palm of his hand, and he's got you as well. And whatever storms are coming, and uh, we might get some bad news today. We're going to see what uh, Martin has to say. I know every single day, if we talk about finances, it, it doesn't seem to be the best report coming forward. Um, and our leaders in all places, in all countries of the world, seem to be either at war, spending a lot of money that they don't need to be spending, doing crazy stuff, and not taking care of the people, the people that pay the taxes. So it's going to be really cool to see uh, what Martin Armstrong, and uh, many of you know him and you follow him because uh, I meet you out on the streets and you say, oh, I just love when you have Martin Armstrong on. So guess what? For you, we're doing it again. He is uh, one of the most famous economic forecasters alive. Armstrong is the developer of the Armstrong Economic Confidence Model, which predicted the October 1987 Black Monday crash to the very day, in fact. He also called the, is this it, uh, Nikkei? 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 Yeah. Uh, it's a Japanese market stock. Uh, he also called that collapse in 1989. Um, it's a stock stock market, right? Yeah. And uh, also the Russian financial collapse in 1998. So things are going to collapse. He knows about it. <laughs> All right. Martin relies on complex mathematical and historical models rather than economic theory. But he is strongly anti-state, anti-central bank, and quick to criticize Keynesian orthodoxy. So welcome to the show. Mr. Armstrong, thank you for waiting in the wings. We appreciate you being here. Well, thank you for inviting me. It's always a pleasure. Thank you. So we're, we're looking at uh, some of the things going on right now, and it, it doesn't look great. What, what can you tell us uh, about the economy? I'm not certain how closely you're following Canada. You seem to be following it all. But the United States, which really greatly affects us, apparently trillions and trillions of debt, dollars in debt. Well, what you have to understand is that um, <clears throat> all these countries in the West have been borrowing money since World War II and with no intention of paying anything back. Um, and this whole debt issue began because they we're under the impression that if you borrowed rather than printed, it'd be less inflationary. That's just not true because it's just money that pays interest if you're never going to pay it off. So they just keep rolling and rolling and rolling. And what we're approaching 
is this is how all the great collapses have actually taken place. All right. What you have to look at is the fact that um, we get into these Ponzi schemes where they issued new debt to pay off the old. And the problem becomes when you can't sell the new debt. If nobody buys the, the continuing coming out debt, all of a sudden they can't pay it off and the whole thing collapses. And that's why they're pushing for central bank digital currencies. They know this is coming. Um, you know, and I mean, I've known many, you know, world leaders over the years. I was good friends with Margaret Thatcher and Reagan called me in back in 85 and everything. Uh, I have never in my entire life, and I've been dealing with governments for about almost 50 years. And um, have I ever seen a crop of world leaders that are the biggest buffoons in history? Uh, and I don't care what country you're looking at. Uh, it, <clears throat> you have to understand, like, um, the president of the United States has a cabinet. And, it, and they're at, the, at these cabinet meetings, all these agencies are like children. They all want to do their own thing. All right. So the president is supposed to stand between them and, you know, basically say, no, you can't do that. Yes, you can. You can't. And Biden's not not even there. All right. So he's on vacation 40 percent of the time. Uh, and you have agencies that are just everybody's just doing their own thing. So, for example, you have these neocons who keep bashing China. Well, China is the largest holder of U.S. debt. And they say, oh, you go into Taiwan, we're going to defend Taiwan, etc. They don't even understand that, that China is starting to sell U.S. debt. They're, you know, if they're not going to buy the new debt coming out, guess what? You know, you're going to collapse. You know, and so what these people are just complete morons. Um, it's like I have a, a gun that has no bullets and I hold it up to you and I say, would you lend me $100 so I can buy some bullets to shoot you? I mean, it's there's then you take the climate change people. I mean, you know, most of them have no idea what they're even talking about. Uh, we just had, you know, over the, the last weekend, people throwing soup on the Mona Lisa. Oh, because it's oil paintings. It's linseed oil, you know. Honey, it's not crude oil. I mean, they don't even understand um, what they're talking about. You can never even get to net zero. Uh, you know, uh, if you ever went to biology class in high school, they would have told you <laughs> that, you know, basically the trees need the CO2 to breathe. If you actually cut out all CO2, the planet would die. I mean, it's... I, you know, doesn't honestly, it, it, it doesn't. And they don't understand they're being manipulated. The, the whole object here, there is a global effort to, to take over this because they know the debts are collapsing. All right. So this whole CBDC stuff is to eliminate paper money. I mean, I've been in meetings for, I can't even tell you how many decades, and they never, ever... Can, look at themselves as a problem. It's always we the people. And so what you're getting to is that they think if they eliminate all paper money, then <clears throat> and force us into digital currencies, they're going to get 35% or more in taxes. They're eliminating the underground economy. So, I mean, if you see a guy on the side of the road with a sign, I'm homeless, you got any money, you know, greatly appreciated. Do you go up to him? He said, do you take visa? I mean, um, you know, they don't understand, you know, you're talking about a profound change. Uh, and <clears throat> Europe put it past the law. Everybody has a right to a bank account. Um, okay, fine. But what, you know, they don't understand how this is even going to work. And if you look at um, one of the great secrets here is that uh, they, the neocons had the Ukrainians blow up the uh, Nord Stream pipeline. 
And the U.S., they basically told Europe, look, keep your mouth shut. Don't worry about it. And we'll build the pipeline from Nigeria to replace your, uh, Russia. So U.S. was paying for this pipeline. Then all of a sudden there was a coup in Niger, and that's when Victoria Newland hopped on the plane. All right. But part of that whole deal was Nigeria was supposed to be the test case for these CBDCs. And you can Google it. You can look. I mean, it's the country's been in absolute turmoil ever since, been fightings and burning banks and everything else. Um, and they eliminated all paper currency. And then when I talk to people in government, they say, oh, well, yeah, okay, fine. But Nigeria, the difference was that there were 60% uh, dependent on cash, uh, cash, you know, currency. And we're not that, that, that highly dependent, you know, and just look at what happened over there. The, you know, turning over ATMs, I mean, setting banks on fire, it just turned into complete chaos. What caused that? Why did they do that? What was it because they couldn't get access to funds? Because they eliminated all paper money and they were to be the, the test case for these CBDCs. And um, they probably needed money and, and somehow they couldn't get access to it, I guess. I mean, uh, this was very everything. upsetting it's, to them. Yeah. Um, it, you know, they have viewed for a long time that they wouldn't have these deficits if everybody paid their taxes. And I don't care uh, what it is. I mean, it, it, if you you pay a hundred dollars in taxes, they think you you really owe two hundred. They do not trust the people. Period. They assume that we are all just um, crooks like they are. I guess uh, you know. Um, and uh, so I, you know, Biden wanted to hire eighty-seven thousand IRS agents. Uh, oh, they go get the rich. There aren't that many rich in the country. All right. Um, so, and, you know, you had Janet Yellen saying, well, oh, we're going to go after the rich and bring it down to, to audit $600 on sales on eBay. I don't think Elon Musk is selling a used bike for $600. You know, I mean, uh, it's all about us. We are the enemy. Mm. And you got to wake up to this. I mean, it, the, the more desperate they get, the worse it becomes. So if this, okay, if, so. if this CBDC comes in, um, basically they'll have control of us. Like what if, like, do you think they will link it to our carbon footprint? They'll link it potentially to our views on politics. Potentially, this is the way that they have the, um, the switch to turn on or off our money, would you say? Yes, look, just like Trudeau um, tried to uh, freeze everybody's accounts who even donated to the truckers. Uh, they'll be able to say, well, okay, fine. We don't like Trump. You're not allowed to donate any money to Trump. Uh, I mean, this is, this is what we're into. And you have to understand something. Um, <clears throat> COVID was really a test case. Um, the U.S. Constitution says the government shall not pass any law <clears throat> that affects uh, free speech or religion, etc. That's the First Amendment. But it says the government shall not. All right. Supreme Court's already ruled the Constitution is negative. And most people don't understand this. You have no constitutional rights. It is a negative restraint upon government. Therefore, Facebook, anybody, they could, you know, take you off. They can violate your First Amendment because you have actually no First Amendment right. And they're taking that and they're doing it with the CBDCs, the central bank digital currencies. They, they realize the same thing. The government could not go in and do this to you, um, you know, <clears throat> social credit scores, things of this nature um, directly. So, you have the top banks are all getting in line to create their own digital currencies, which would then be regulated by the, the central bank. And then the individual banks can do whatever they want. Uh, we don't like you. Okay. Um, we're going to debank you. We're going to do this or whatever. And that's perfectly okay. The government can't do it, but they privately, they can. 
So um, we have to understand this. This, this, is, this is where we're going. Uh, and it's very clever, but they, they got away with it with COVID. And so now they're just taking that same model and they're applying it in the finance world. So if they have another, if there's another emergency, they'll uh, implement yet more restrictions. And then those restrictions never seem to leave. Um, uh, one of the things uh, that you wrote about, what will the Fed do in 2024? Uh, Powell calls fiscal path unsustainable. And uh, everyone wants to know what the Federal Reserve will do in 2024. Uh, what was your thoughts in, in this article that you wrote? And, um, and, and what do you see the path forward? Well, <clears throat> uh, I have advised many central banks around the world. Uh, and uh, so I know intimately what's looked at, what's not looked at, et cetera. And I can tell you that central banks, um, it, it's kind of a club to some degree. You, they will not criticize their host government and they do not criticize each other. All right. Uh, so when Powell came out at the beginning of December and he said, this debt is unsustainable. That is the first time the Federal Reserve has taken a shot at the current administration since 1951. That was the last time the Federal Reserve said, no way, we're, we're just not going to follow with this. And that then it was over the Korean War. And the White House wanted them to uh, keep buying the debt to, to make sure the interest rates didn't go up. And they said, we're not going to do it. So we're approaching that. When Powell came out and said, this debt is unsustainable, that was a major, major event. I know media didn't understand because they don't actually <laughs> deal with the central banks like I do. Uh, they do not criticize the government. I mean, just you can go Google it. When was the last time the Bank of Canada actually criticized the federal government? Um, you know, so that statement was a major watershed. It's showing you that there is serious, you know, issues at stake here. And we're also looking at um, the CBDCs. Uh, I don't know how much is out in the news, but um, the Federal Reserve is not going to, to issue it. It's, you know, it, you have the banks that are all standing in line and they wouldn't be creating these digital dollars to compete if the Fed was going to issue it. Simple as simple as that. So um, you have the IMF trying to issue one and hoping to overtake the, the dollar as a reserve currency. They don't even know what they're doing. Uh, but all of this is about control. And they know the financial system as it stands is not going to be sustainable. Um, you know it what is I, coming to an end. Right. You know what I always wonder is how have they, like, how do they keep doing it? You know, when I have a credit card, I usually have a limit. So this is my small way of thinking about it. And I don't understand how you can keep going trillions and trillions more in debt. And, and they say that it's not backed by gold and the funds aren't there. So... I know I'm just, you know, one blonde girl, but I don't understand how it keeps going. And then when is the crash? When is it when the credit card company says, Laura Lynn, you don't get any more money because you've been bad and you put yourself in debt and now your credit score is gone and you're not getting any more credit cards. And then they start wanting you to pay back. Um, where is that process with the governments? I think we're going to start seeing that after particularly the 24 election. Uh, we're, we're reaching that point. Okay. And, and as I, I said before, um, Biden's on vacation most of the time. Yeah. So he's, he's not in these meetings and running, you know, coordinating between these agencies. So they're all kind of running amok and you can't have these neocons. And, and I know some of them, I, um, I knew Bill Crystal. His father's the one that even started the whole neocon movement. All right. And all honesty, uh, when Khrushchev came out and said, we will bury you, 
all right, they kind of all got all riled up. And, oh, yeah, well, we're going to take democracy to the world. All right. Well, communism fell all by itself. All right. And I think they're just angry that they never got to shoot anybody. Um, <laughs> it, 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 what can I say? I mean, um, Crystal wrote a book on to justify going in Iraq. And these people, their idea is so distorted that, oh, we go in and we remove these dictators and the people will cheer. And I've even heard them saying this about Russia. Oh, Putin's a, a dictator. And, and so we go in and we invade Russia and overthrow him. The, the people will cheer. He's got an 80 some percent approval rating. They're not stupid. They know who's going on here. Um, and, uh, you know, you, you take out dictators, uh, you know, you that your form of democracy is still you're in control. We, you know, we don't live in democracies. We live in a republic. And nobody asks us, shall we go to war with Russia? We're not asked that question. Um, mm -hmm. You know, shall we, you know, raise your taxes? Do they ever ask? No. Um, you know, it, it was like Vietnam. I mean, it's a democracy. You're 18 years old. You could get drafted, you know, given a gun and go die for your country. You weren't, you were too young to have a drink and you were too young to vote. That's democracy. It sounds more like a dictatorship. Mm -hmm. And, but these people keep yeah. pretending that we live in this democracy and we do not, you know, Athenian democracy was the head of the household went down and vote. Yes, women didn't vote unless they were the head of the household, but you didn't need to. All right. The, the questions were, you know, should we go to war or not go to war stuff like this? When they start getting into these personal things, uh, telling women this, that, the other thing, that all came with socialism. All right. Now they're affecting absolutely everybody's life. So, yes, everybody has to have a right to vote. If they couldn't do anything to you and it was just about, hey, do we go into Russia or not go into Russia, then fine. One person from the House could vote for everybody else. You know, but uh, we have these so-called representatives who represent many houses and they don't represent anybody but themselves. You know, and that's the problem. I mean, that's why Caesar crossed the Rubicon. It was uh, he wasn't a dictator. He was cheered by the people. It was the Senate that fled to, to, to Greece, you know? Yeah. I mean, but Cicero was the fake news guy back then, you know, and he was one of the oligarchs. And, uh, oh, so you know, Caesar is a dictator. The people cheered. It was a debt crisis then, too. But far worse, if you didn't pay your debt, uh, they would take your children and put the children into slavery to pay off the debt. I mean, so they cheered I Caesar when, when he crossed the Rubicon. <laughs> and I guess that was some kind of accountability, which seems to be lost now. Um, I've read a couple of articles, people worried about these interest rates and uh, potentially facing the loss of their homes. Do, do you see anything coming for the real estate market? Um, it's kind of slowed, <laughs> but I, I'm not certain if we're seeing a whole lot of uh, bankruptcies or, you know, um, seizures of homes and whatnot do you think that we're going to have a bad year in that regard and also do you think if trump gets in that we kind of save america financially um if trump got in you probably would but i question whether or not they would let him in uh mainly yeah, people because are saying that he, they don't think that he'll get let in i think now. they would assassinate him because because he's come out against these cbdc's the central bank digital currencies he's against war uh, and he's against climate change i mean those are the three main things that it, they all want so i can't see um i you know i i just can't see them allowing him in you had soros's son put out a, a a thing I don't know if you saw it, with a bullet hole through a, a pane of glass and forty seven dollars next to it. He was the forty seventh president. Oh. You know, and the implication was assassinate Trump. Wow. Uh, is is it shouldn't he be in trouble for putting out something like that? If it was somebody doing that about Biden, he'd be in, in prison in five minutes. You know, but it's it's Alex Soros, you know. 
So are we in big trouble? I mean, are we, the the word I've been getting for the last years, I feel that we're seized. Like something, a very dark evil force has kind of taken control. They seem to have the money, they have the power, and they they control everything. They control media, and and like Trudeau gets away with everything. So um, I I really, I hope that there's a, a lot of security around Trump and that we get him in, you know, barring all hell, holy hell coming against him. But... But when you when you say things like this, this is very serious. Um, I mean, our country's lost if we cannot truly elect a decent person to save it. Well, I think it's part of the process. Uh, the computer basically says that these Republican forms of government will collapse. All right. Um, yeah, that's that's the tweet that Soros' son actually sent out. I can't believe that you know, you would do that, but. You know, um, I'm sure if I did that with 48 hours uh, alongside of it, I'd be in prison pretty fast. Um, But, you know, it's look, I the computers has shown from day one that the 2024 election is not going to be um, accepted by either either side. So civil war, maybe. Do you think civil war? You're getting to the point. This this is what people have to understand. Centralized government is the problem. All right. Um, You look at Rome. uh, A lot of people say, oh, Rome was pagan. They had all these gods. Largely because they believed in freedom of religion. All right. If you, you, they conquered all these different places. True. They let them keep their culture. All right. They had all different gods, all right? Athens had Athena, you know, and, and so on. They didn't force them to say, oh, no, you have to now accept only our God, you know? Um, so that's why there were so many different, you know, variations uh, per se. But um, when you have a centralized government, you're then dictating to everybody else. That's what the Soviet Union was about, all right? And most people don't realize, but Lenin, was really trying to copy the United States. His first, his proposal was that all these provinces joined together to create the Soviet Union and they would retain their sovereignty. All right. It was Stalin who came in and they believe he killed, he poisoned uh, Lenin and his wife. And he's the one that said, no, 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 it's got to be central control and grabbed everything. Um, and that's what we face here. You just look at Biden, you know, um, when the fe- U.S. was founded, it was states' rights. Uh, you can read the Federalist uh, Papers, number 46, and Hamilton and Madison, they were swearing, all the states, you're going to continue to have your rights. It would never, ever happen if... if um, that the federal government would ever overrule your your constitution and we've just seen it you know you have biden basically going in there and just saying no you can't stop the the people coming in um you have 25 states now going down to support texas uh it's <clears throat> you're you're bringing it to the point where it is civil war and um <clears throat> that's pretty much the same thing that resulted in in uh the u.s civil war you know people focus on oh it was uh you know slavery it it was yes it was slavery but it was the the question was that that the south needed that was the labor force all right and it began with britain sending in the criminals indentured servitude and after the u.s revolution then they started sending them to Australia. So Australia became the penal colony. But initially, that was the South uh, in the United States. So then the Dutch started bringing over the African slaves. Um, and so you're looking at, <clears throat> I mean, they didn't understand what would happen. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, okay, fine, they freed the slaves. And what are the slaves supposed to do? Most of them stayed and they just got wages then. Uh, if, if they had understood, you know, okay, fine, you know, just move to a wage system, you would have saved, you know, hundreds of thousands of lives, but nobody quite understood it. The same thing happened in, in Russia. 
and U.S. actually followed Russia in that case. In 1861, <clears throat> the Tsar uh, basically outlawed serfdom. So all the serfs were free. Okay, but you didn't own anything. You didn't have anything. And there weren't Starbucks to go get a, a local you know, job at. So that's why Marxism took off. And then you had the revolution. Yeah, the rich had got everything. Because these people were all the serfs for hundreds of years and owned nothing. All right. So that's why communism took off in Russia. All right. And <clears throat> so you have to understand, you know, the, the thought process and how do we arrive at those situations? Mm. It's not whether it's good, bad or different. It's just how did you evolve? And um, so the South in the U.S. was fighting over st states' rights that you're not going to come in here and tell us what to do. All right, so that's the same thing you're seeing in Texas. All right, the issue changes. All right, now it's migrants instead of slavery or whatever. But the question is, <clears throat> does the federal government have the right to go in and say, no, we don't care what you're doing. That's illegal. We declare it to be illegal. And most people don't realize, but... Um, <clears throat> The when this whole thing with the border, that was the very first executive order that Biden signed within hours of walking into the White House. Within hours, um, I can tell you that Trump had a uh, a whole team in Tampa, and that was to figure out how to exit from Afghanistan correctly. All right, and simply because Trump had, had ordered the military to create this team, Biden came in, fired them all. Oh, because right. they, they were hired by Trump. It, it got to the point, it's it's like whatever Trump did, we just have to reverse. It, it, without any logical sense, was it better, worse, whatever. And so this is why we've gotten this complete polarization in the country. Uh, and... Uh, it, it's just getting completely, completely out of hand. Uh, you know, the, the Pew research has come out. This is, it's more than just uh, Republican versus Democrat. There is actually, uh, you know, hatred be building between these people. And it's, it's hard to overlook. And I think it all started with Hillary when she was, you know, saying that anybody that voted against her was a deplorable. I mean, how do you, you know, how do you get to that? Um, it, it's just. <clears throat> I, um, I know they've separated the, uh, they've separated the country. It's interesting to me that Fox is reporting on Texas bound, take our border back convoy. Now this is happening right now. And uh, we had a couple mm -hmm. of people on here. And but what they're showing, this wasn't intentional at all, but they're showing the Canadian truckers in this video. Not exactly sure why, but I think I don't know if it's an ode to it. I don't know why it's the, the Canadians, but basically, um, you know, Trump and the Trump and Biden camps are pretty furious about what's going on. Uh, like the, they have differing opinions, but it does seem like a lot more Democrats are now saying we're not too happy with all these migrants coming into the country and them being shipped up to Martha's Vineyard or New York State. And now I saw on Fox News last night that they've got these vigilante um, Texans and, and they've got guns on and they're now saying we're going to we're also going to uh, watch the border like this is getting intense actually yes. and, and people could be hurt and i should tell you that uh the canadian truckers is what has inspired the entire world um that's why the, you have all the the farmers taking the the tractors into into uh berlin and 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 brussels and you have this convoy you know for texas it's like your, your Canadian truckers show the world what should be done. And so you're seeing this. Um, and I think I wrote a, a you know, a, a piece on it saying, you know, thank God for the truckers and the farmers, because they're the ones that are standing up. Right. Um, I, I'm really glad that the Canadian truckers, you know, maybe had something to do. It's in the share there. 
uh, with what you know with what's going on down there. But um, it it does seem that worldwide uh, we've got a real problem. Like a, a lot of violence is erupting. We even have the New York State cops um, being attacked by some of these migrants that are coming across, and they're beating up the police here right now. And after they beat up the police, it's my understanding they, they were released without bail several hours later. It didn't take long at all. And this is these are migrants and they arrested five of them. Um, so people, people are gonna begin getting very angry and you have to wonder what the heck is wrong with Biden and the Democrats doing this to our country? Who's paid them off? Who's behind it? And of course, we talk about the elites and the globalists. Um, we, it just seems like we're in a lot more trouble if we cannot just make this stop and go away. If, if common sense people that are in the, the U.S. Senate and some of the uh, amazing Republicans that we hear from all the time can't seem to stop this. And the, the border's a mess. So this convoy is going down to Arizona, California and Texas, and they are all having a big, huge day on February 3rd, which is fantastic. So I'm going to be, you know, sort of keeping an eye on it over the next couple of days. But I just got a, I just got a text this morning from someone who says, let's all go down, you know, let's go down to Texas. Um, he's saying people do want to get down there um, and have a showing have of Canadians. have states now joining Texas. I mean, that's pretty much half the country. Right. Yes. So people have had you enough. You have 50 states. <laughs> right. So, to, so half of them are, are basically supporting uh, Texas against Washington. Right. And we had some uh, B-roll there of what's happening in other parts of the world because the farmers are getting upset. Like you said, there just seems to be quite an attack on uh, farmers globally. Uh, they're doing really crazy things, making it hard for farmers to make food. That seems like a stupid thing for any human being who actually needs to eat or will die, you know? So this attack on farmers globally <clears throat> is a very strange event that's happening. Um, in all honesty, they, they do want to reduce the population. And that's really what this whole climate change thing is about. Uh, and uh, I mean, even if you take <clears throat> the abortion issue, uh, I've published, you know, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who was a woman supporter when she first got to the Supreme Court, she said Roe versus Wade had nothing to do with women's rights. It was basically being pushed by um, the eugenics agenda of Bill Gates's father. Uh, it had, you know, and very cleverly, they got women, you know, a lot of women to support. It's your right we're fighting for. Oh, yeah. Okay, right. All right. It's, it wasn't. But it's, look, they did that in insurance. You know, the, you buy fire insurance, accident insurance. They couldn't sell death insurance. So they changed the name. They called it life insurance. And then everybody bought it. Oh, yeah, I got a, a lot more life insurance than you do. <laughs> Whatever, you know. Uh, but they couldn't sell it as death insurance. So you just change the name to the exact opposite and people love it. And that's what they did with the whole abortion issue. But um, look, I, I had, I was with, um, uh, when <clears throat> China was gonna take over Hong Kong, they knew I knew the Australian government. And uh, so I <clears throat> tried negotiating for them uh, with the prime minister, you know, Paul Keating down there and I said, look, I got a blank check. I can pay off your national debt. We wanted to buy an island, let them in in the upper left-hand corner. No, nothing I suggested was acceptable. I finally said to him, I said, what is this, racist? I, I couldn't come up with a conclusion as to what's going on. And he actually responded to me and he says, no, it's not racist. He says, they are fleeing communism. If they come to Australia, they'll vote conservative. So... That's what we're seeing with this migrant issue. They wouldn't allow them in because Paul Keating was labor. If they let all these people in from Hong Kong, they would vote conservative and they would lose power. So here what we're seeing is the mistake thinking that if they open the border and all these people come in, 
they'll vote Democrat and they'll be able to crush everybody on the opposite side. Um, but there's a, a documentary nightmare at the border by uh, Kennedy. And he went down there and the vast majority of people coming in are from the Middle East and Africa, not from South America. Uh, and he said he met one couple from, from Peru, you know, but uh, <clears throat> there's no guarantee how these people are even going to vote. But the, the scuttlebutt is, is that Biden was, is going to uh, issue an executive order granting them all citizenship so they can vote before the election, so they can rig it. Uh, and then he's going to step down and Michelle Obama will step in. Uh, because they know he is, even our computer is showing that his approval rating is under 10%. Um, <laughs> so is it Michelle so, Obama? Do you think she's the one that they are going to surprise? It's Michelle Obama running for president? Um, I think so, largely yeah. because they have to be woke. They, you know, uh, I think this Hillary's probably in convulsions, you know, but... Uh, yeah. Um, she's black and a woman. All right. So I don't think they can do, go any other which direction right. at this stage. Um, <clears throat> they've been selling this. So, um, you know, I mean, the only other thing that would make it a plus would be if she was transgender on top of it, you know. Right. Um, but <laughs> it, it's just, you know, the and, whole thing has just gotten to be crazy. And what about Kamala? She's black and a woman, but I guess no one likes her um, and her cackle and her ineptness. You know, I don't even know how she became a lawyer. I really don't. Um, <laughs> and I mean, they put her in charge of the border. <laughs> that was supposed to be, she was the border czar. That, right? that didn't work out I don't out know if she's well. ever gone down there. I don't even know. One time, I don't uh, know. And now they put her in charge of AI. I mean, AI, she doesn't, probably doesn't even know how to spell it. Uh, <laughs> it's it's just, I mean, come on. I mean, these people just, uh, there's yeah. nobody there. Honestly, I mean, like I said, I, I've been dealing with governments around the world for a long time. Uh, I used to have, be able to have uh, intelligent conversations. I mean, I was good friends with Maggie Thatcher. I mean, you know, that error, I mean, there were people Brilliant that people. actually really smart. you could talk to. Yeah. I don't know who I could possibly talk to. Certainly not your Trudeau, not Biden, no. not yeah. Ursula in Europe. I mean, it's like, could you ever get anybody worse than all these people? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's like they've been put in positions. We have a, a global crisis in leadership. All of these crazy people, the woke uh, the woke people, you know, they're more concerned about, you know, pronouns and things like this than actually uh, making sure that we can defend our country. And they've spent money just, you know, all of it. It's so, you know, very insane. And I see that you're not really a fan of Nikki Haley either. What do you think about her? Look, she's just a neocon. I mean, I couldn't believe it. She said, oh, well, Hamas invaded. Uh, and I put the tape on our on our site because I just couldn't even believe it myself. Hamas <clears throat> invaded Israel on Putin's birthday, implying that it was like a birthday present for him. <laughs> I mean, come on. I mean, it. Um, it's Nikki Haley. If if you want to see World War Three, you know she's your she's your candidate. I mean, the vast majority of people donating to her are the Democrats and Soros. Um, you know, uh, she's got tons of money. Why? Uh, it's just that, you know, that that's what's going on. I mean, if the, if the Democrats can get her elected, then nothing changes. Um, it's, yeah. This is all an agenda, you know, mm -hmm. and, and they don't really care. And people have to understand. I mean, <clears throat> there really is a uniparty in both your country and in ours. Yeah. Uh, it's, when do you it think comes so? down do you to think We issues? see it in Canada as well. I, I agree with you. Like um, so many of the ridiculous um, things that are being pushed, we have a uniparty with the liberals, the conservatives and NDP. And I harp about this all the time, but people get a bit mad because, well, we got to get rid of Trudeau. 
And I guess that, you know, the lesser of all evils is going to be probably better. They're going to probably put in Pierre Polyev uh, when we have another election. But uh, some of his beliefs and, and the entire caucus has joined in, you know, for a transgender agenda, for climate, uh, reaching our climate limits and, uh, you know, stuff like that. So it's problematic. Well, I can tell you, I mean, <clears throat> I've actually been to meetings in Washington, but I can run for anything, tell you anything you want to hear. I'll save the whales, I'll do whatever you want to hear to get elected. Then I get down there and the way it works is, okay, fine. We don't care what you said to get here. This is how you will vote. So if you look at the votes, they're down party line. You're told now, you know, what to vote for. If you are not, if you're going to resist that, you don't get on a committee and you have to understand you're not allowed to simply stand up in Congress and make a motion. All motions must come through a committee. So if you're not a good boy, you don't get on a committee. It's so rigged in every which possible way to deny, you know, this is not, you know, it's not a democracy. You know, the people you vote for, you think are actually going to represent you. Good luck. Uh, mm -hmm. They get down mm -hmm. there and, and in order to get power, they have to go with, with the agenda. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I've even at the last conference I had, I I brought in because I didn't wasn't sure people would even believe me on this, so I brought in the chief of staff of of a house banking committee who had just retired, and I said, okay, fine, maybe coming from you they'll listen, and he and he did a great job, and he said, look, you have to understand the people that rise to the head of the party are the ones that have the least courage. They're the ones that conform to the agenda. If you're out there screaming and yelling, you don't get anywhere. Uh, they, they will su suppress you, keep you down. This is, it's, it is a uniparty. That's, yes. that was Trump's problem, mm. you know? Um, and <clears throat> they stuck in his cabinet, all the people to stab him in the back. And he began realizing what was going on. He started firing people. Uh, John Bolton. I mean, he would invade Canada for to get three Russians. You know, uh, <laughs> these people are horrible. Yes, they are I horrible. Mean, look at Victoria Newland. She's the queen of the neocons. She was in absolutely every administration except for Trump's. It was her husband, Kagan, who wrote for the war. You know, for the Washington Post. Oh, Trump's a dictator. If he gets in, it'll be a dictatorship. Why is he nonsense? It's because his wife wasn't in the White House, basically, during Trump's administration. Because she's basically started, all she ever wants to do is invade the rest of the world. Right. Um, it, it's just horrible. I mean, what these people are doing, uh, what they say, the media, uh, I can tell you, I... I spoke directly to a former executive vice president of uh, New York Post. And he explained to me how this really works. If you <clears throat> want to be a journalist, you want to write some story, you'll get a phone call. We have a favor. Twist it this way, whatever, and uh, no problem. All right. If you go against them, what they will do is they will come after you. Oh, taxes? whatever, you know, um, and they don't attack the newspaper. They attack the journalist. Uh, the journalist that uh, Snowden had gone to in California, um, who was going to publish all his stuff. Suddenly his car is hacked and he drives into a tree and dies. Uh, I mean, <clears throat> there's an agenda here and that agenda is you have to understand climate change is to hand over the power to the United Nations. That's why they stand up and say, no single country can do this. It has to be the UN. You have George Soros pushing every which button he can, open borders. Um, and you have Klaus Schwab, who, who I know, I mean, I was even invited to when he put out his movie in New York. Uh, it, it, <clears throat> Don't say that. Don't tell anybody that. 
keep that between no, us. No, I mean, I've known okay, these I, people. I you have to like sometime, them. you have to look at them in the eye. Right. To really see what they're about. And I'd like you and, to. Yeah. Um, it's just, you know, Klaus is an academic. All right. And his idea is, um, is communism. You know, a lot of the academics always support the left wing. And you can't have, you know, oh, equity. All right. You can't have equity until everybody's the same. And everybody's the same. That's communism. All mm -hmm. right. Uh, nobody's left to imagine freely about anything. Right. So, Let me ask you a few uh, predictions. Like, let's say coming up here in, in 2024, um, you're you're saying maybe it's Michelle Obama. We had a guy. He's written a book, Michelle Obama, 2024. He fully believes she's going in. I'm I'm seeing that Fox and CNN are throwing out little clues, like or you know the questioning because they haven't done it yet. But she would make sense. Um, but if if she got in, would the would all of the mega community feel that another? Uh, problem happened with the election can michelle obama beat trump do you, do you believe she could legitimately beat him and if she gets in what happens to the country do the borders stay open uh do they continue with their woke madness and if trump gets in is the left gonna say oh no no this was hanky panky either they try to kill him as you've already said or they don't allow, they, they won't receive it. The whole country goes into an uproar because when we lose as the, you know, the Republicans lost in 2020, whether fairly or not, we lost, but we were upset about it, but we didn't burn the streets down. We didn't do anything like that. But when they lose, they all holy hell is to pay, you know, mm -hmm. when they're upset. So what, what, what are oh, some it, predictions it, it, you have? When Trump was uh, being inaugurated, they set Washington D.C. on fire, right? Um, looting stores, etc. You know, the left is always more violent. That's just simply the way it is. Um, <clears throat> my concern is our computer, which is has been unbiased. It has never been wrong on any political forecast ever. Um, it even forecast Brexit. I mean, uh, Nigel Farage came down and 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 wanted to be a guest speaker at our 2019 um, World Economic Conference we held in Rome, and he said, "Of course, I'm here." He's the only one that said I would win. Um, and <clears throat> our computer is showing, and I have to stress this: I've never seen this happen in my lifetime. All right, okay. but it. It is showing basically a split of like 61 to 37 in favor of the Republican side. Yeah. Um, and to, to put this in context, even Obama won like 51 and a half. That's typically what you see. Mm -hmm. 51, 52, 53. There's only three presidents in history that ever got 60 percent or more. And that was FDR during the Great Depression. Uh, Johnson after Kennedy was assassinated, because I think that was a sympathy vote, and Richard Nixon uh, to take us out of Vietnam. Uh, so <clears throat> for the computer to be projecting 61% for a Republican this year. Uh, That's good news. I've never seen I'm happy to hear it. I'm happy to hear it. And, and you know, uh, I do pray that the people and Trump is being very careful, guarding himself, his family. Um, and, and ensuring, you know, all, all safety measures, but boy, do we ever need him in? Maybe we're due for a miracle. Maybe we are. I, and I don't know because the computer is also showing, uh, a sharp rise in civil unrest after the election. Yes. Well, and that so, would happen, wouldn't it? I mean, really that would happen, yeah. I guess on either side, whoever wins that would happen, but, but. I, I agree because I don't think it's just tenable to go through what happened in 2020 again and not have like everyone lose their ever loving minds because of all the evidence and whatnot. Um, so yeah, if there is unrest, but then what, then what, what does that mean for us, Mr. Armstrong? I mean, I, uh, we'll I get through it. I think you're seeing this Texas issue. Um, yes. 
is going to <clears throat> explode even more. Okay. Because the computer is also showing that by 2028, there may not even be a federal election. Right. By 2028. So you, right. That would be the next the one next out. The next one. No more elections. Right. So if everyone's and, done, basically. Okay. So yeah. you're probably looking at <clears throat> the breakup uh, of the United States, probably Canada too, West versus East there. I mean, every country you go to in Italy is North versus South. In Germany, it's also North versus South. Um, you look there, the AFD has won, and they're like basically from uh, Bavaria, which is more of the Catholic South. The North is Prussia, it was Protestant. Right. Um, and I mean, I was there, and it was a holiday in Bavaria, and I, I said, oh, what's the holiday? And they said, oh, you know, we won the war. Mm -hmm. I said, which war is this? Oh, the war against Prussia. <laughs> you know? um, and you, you're seeing the same thing everywhere. These farmers in, 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 in <clears throat> France is basically being torn apart. You're looking, I, mean, I have, um, you know, friends that are living in southern France. They can't even make it to work. The roads are all blocked and, and everything else. Um, so it looks as though you're talking about uh, a lot of countries, civil unrest. We're looking at separatist movements. And this is against that backdrop of centralized control, which tore you know, the Soviet Union down. It took China down. Um, it, this one size fits all does not work. Um, and so, uh, you, you know, you have Trudeau over there going after Alberta. I mean, um, you know, the, if you, I, I published a chart showing the, the amount of oil that actually comes in the bulk of it comes from Texas. Mm. If Texas separates and you want to create a, a, uh, civil unrest and, and block trade and stuff. All right, fine. You're not going to have enough gas to fill the tanks to invade anything. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You're looking at a lot of, of <clears throat> very disturbing trends. And I think a, a lot of it is being pushed by um, the World Economic Forum, uh, George Soros, UN, uh, Bill Gates with his, you know, uh, you know, basically put, you know, drugs in everybody. Um, and fake I mean, meat. And buying, he's buying Look, a I was, I, and I had an office in Geneva and I closed it down years ago. Mainly, I, it, Geneva is like one mass grade party. You never know who anybody is. Um, the, the WEF has been given, you know, diplomatic immunity. So is Gabby. So is, is the WHO. I mean, diplomatic immunity is different. I mean, we had politicians say, okay, fine, they're immune, you can't sue them. Diplomatic immunity means no country can sue them. Uh, it's, <clears throat> these organizations do not require that. And I know a lot of Swiss people are starting to, to feel that their government there has been bought off as well. That's uh, what it feels like. It's the buy-off, right? Like the money is yeah. behind this. So these, these people, they're puppets of someone else. And, and, but and I think that's the unrest, right? We're getting frantic. People are getting frantic. I'm not. I always think, you know, I'll survive anything. But I think that people um, are are generally very angry. They're, and Klaus Schwab said this. People are going to get very angry. I wonder how he knew yes. that because he knew that really bad, stupid stuff that doesn't make any sense to a normal person is going to start happening en masse. Yeah, I mean, look, it's... Um... He is, is looking at this from a standpoint of his economic ideas. Soros is, is the same thing. It's just, oh, you know, you know, I even put a tape on our site of the former president of France, Holland, <clears throat> standing alongside Merkel in the EU. And he, he said, the reason we're creating this is to end European war. This is their theory. One government, you end war. And you're not, I mean, Rome was one government. How many civil wars did they have? It's um, ridiculous. It is ridiculous. But, you know, these are academics that have pushed this agenda. Uh, and it's not realistic. 
Uh, that's the whole thing behind the EU. Like I said, I, I put a, a tape because it's hard to believe that they actually think this, but they do. Um, and this was, you know, Holland and Merkel standing up. Yes, yes, the EU. Uh, I mean, I advised uh, Margaret Thatcher. She understood what this was about. That's why she kept Britain out uh, of the pound, um, out of the euro. They staged a coup against her. Oh, we have to be part of this wonderful dream. You know, and um, that didn't work out. So, I mean, this is a, a, a sales job, <laughs> really, uh, mm. of trying to sell this idea of a one world government. And it's not going to work. It it's never has in work. history. Right. And uh, our computer's basically showing mm -hmm. after 2032, we get to redesign government. Uh, and okay. <clears throat> So we've so got I'm, I'm how many years till that? We've, we've got basically um, eight years. Yeah, about Nine. eight years. That's about it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we got to go through hell. <laughs> yes, you have well, everybody to. Everybody tries you, to figure it out. Yeah. If we don't do that, then you don't get the change. Mm. All right. You have to see what is really going on. And that's why these people from Soros and Schwab and all, they're fighting because they know they're losing power. Mm -hmm. They know what's coming. Um, <clears throat> and so they're fighting to, to try and get control and to suppress it and to move it into their direction. Um, and so we're, we're facing this major battle between these two major philosophies. Yeah. Uh, and... Um, you know, this that's is basically really where epic, I... isn't it? Right? Like this is in history. They will write papers. They they will talk about what you know Martin Armstrong said uh, during you know this epic change in culture and the the economic landscape and and the political landscape of the world right now. Um, this is so bad. I hope we can defeat them. Um, you know, there's certain predictions in the Bible too, and I, I know that. Uh, you know, I don't know how much you'll, your um, your computer will ascribe anything that's sort of predicted, but you know, it doesn't all really end very well with mankind. They they screw everything up. Um, they're so egotistical and they want everything their own way. They're selfish and they're greedy, and ultimately, these forces that get any kind of power and they're they're driven by greed and and power and uh, you know violence. Uh, they they'll do a, a lot of damage. So what are you recommending people do today? Are you still, do you believe that gold and silver are, are good places to put your funds? Um, yeah, I think you're, you know, there's always a black market. And when they move to these digital currencies, um, they may prevent you from even buying gold or silver at that time. Uh, and probably will, because I know, um, Gold dealers, uh, I spoke to some in Norway, they're being debanked. Um, the same thing I've heard from a few in the United States. Uh, gold refiners, they've been highly regulated. They have to say where every gram came from and where it went. Uh, so, so you think it uh, might be hard to get it one day because that will be the currency of a black market outside of the digital currency. Yes. I, I think you're looking at that. You're looking at, at food, that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, canned goods, things of that nature. It's like in prison, you know, cigarettes became cash. Right. You know? <laughs> We're um, going to get desperate. <clears throat> okay. Um, <clears throat> so, I mean, you have to just understand that we have to, we do have to go through this so that everybody actually understands what's happening. I right. mean, you just go to a Starbucks and you'll see like a 20 year old holding up their phone to pay. You know, they're perfectly happy with electronic money. Yes. Uh, they don't even know what gold is. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> so, you know, not everybody, you know, is in the same boat at the same time. Right. Uh, a lot so, of people don't don't even know we have a problem yet for some reason. Uh, they're just yeah. not discerning. <laughs> um, <clears throat> it's until it hits them. And, and that's what this process is about over the next eight years pretty much everybody's going to come to the conclusion this does not work. Right. All right. And the American Revolution, what was it about? It said no taxation without representation. 
All right. What did that mean? It meant that the colonies had nobody to represent them in parliament in London. All right. So the colonies had no representative. That's what it was about. So it's like this Texas versus Washington. We have our own thing and you're not recognizing it. Um, so that's where you get this centralized control always fails. There isn't one exception where it is not failed. All right. And so you, if you understand that, um, you know, the founding fathers were um, pretty good, but left a lot. They didn't understand how things would, would develop. Uh, initially, you, you know, Congress only met for maybe a few weeks of the year. Uh, it was a two-year term, and there was no salary, uh, <clears throat> so they thought that was okay. But you know, they ended up paying themselves salaries by 1825. Mm. Uh, so once they did that, then they became career politicians. Once they're career politicians, they're always on the other side looking at us. Mm. They're never with us. That's the whole problem. Mm. All right, <clears throat> they are not of the people or by the people. Right. Because they're on the, that other side and they always see the government, that uniparty comes before the people. It's once you hand power to anybody and I don't care who they are, they don't want to give it back. Right. So term limits uh, would definitely be something that that would be helpful. You look at Nancy Pelosi. She's just enriched her life uh, through her term by having all of these backroom deals or or, you know, having insider information on her stocks. Uh, you know, it's just amazing how wealthy you can get while serving your country. Um, so so well, maybe that is just... Bankrupt. Yes. And they're worth hundreds of millions. I mean, it's... it's uh, uh, Saudi Arabia was donating to the Clinton Foundation. Oh, because they cared about, you know, uh, gays and women's rights? I don't think so. As soon as she lost, they stopped. <laughs> right. Um, what is you know, they what just is buying buying influence? Right. Um, my final question is sort of what is did uh, you you mentioned uh, twenty thirty two? Does your um, machine have any predictions past that? Is that kind of getting sort of at its uh, maximum? Uh, no, I mean it, it looks as though the whole separatist movement and the re defining a government will be uh, two years after that by, by 2034. Okay. Um, but we do have to go through this in order to come out the other side. Right. Uh, so there is a light at the end of the tunnel. It's not all dark and doom. Um, <clears throat> um, like I said, I've known you know Schwab for a long time. His great reset is our 2032. He knows mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he's just trying to push it in his direction. Right. But we don't want his his style, do we? We don't want oh, his absolutely. ideas. No, that, that's even worse. He's, he's against democracy. The people shouldn't have a right to vote. We're too stupid to know what we're voting for. Um, mm -hmm. And you can read where he comes up with that idea from the Greek philosophers, Aristotle, Plato, and Socrates, they were against um, democracy. The, the 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 politician was a selected by lot, um, not by election. In the sense that you go, oh, vote for me, and I'll give you this, that, the other thing. It was by lottery. Um, so to some degree, you eliminated that that nonsense. But we're at a stage here with this debt. <clears throat> You know, people say, oh, go return to a gold standard. You don't understand what's at the issue here. If you went to a gold standard, <clears throat> how is they, these people going to run for election? They can no longer say, vote for me and I'll give you X, Y, and Z. All right. They can't just print money to, to fulfill, you know, promises to maybe get back in office. All that has to change. You have to change the entire political system. It's not just some gold standard. You know, that's not going to do anything. Um, <clears throat> it didn't prevent the collapse before. And so you're, you're talking about a political restructuring. And that's really what has to take place. And it will come. It's just that people have to see and say, okay, fine. Now I understand enough's enough. 
and we're going in this direction. Does it mean a loss for everyone um, financially? Like, is is are we, you know, uh, is everyone going to take big hits? I mean, for a billionaire or a millionaire, it's maybe not going to be that big a deal. But if somebody that has a home and has collateral in their home and a small mortgage, um, if that home devalues to half or less or if the, the money in the bank, do you think that that can simply devalue as well on a day to like a third of, of what you think it's worth? I don't know what the percentage well, it, would be. Not really. Um, you know, if you, you if the money devalues by 50%, everything else is devalued by 50%. So it, it's still relative. Um, yes. <clears throat> what you're looking at really is um, you don't want to have any government debt that's probably the number one thing to avoid because when the government does default, they never pay off the debt. Um, you can go on eBay and buy uh, uh, continental currency from the United States. The constitution swore they were going to honor all that. They didn't. Okay. Um, but so you can buy, you know, hundred hour bills from 1776. <laughs> yeah. Um, they never redeemed any of that. It's so that's what you're looking at. Don't expect um, <clears throat> the government to ever honor anything because they will not. Uh, the same thing with uh, when Germany went through its hyperinflation and they created a new currency. It was backed by real estate. Mm. So the real estate does make the transition. All right. It's <clears throat> the value who knows what value is because value of in expressed in the current currency is something completely different than whatever the new currency will be. Uh, it's, but the tangible assets make that transition from one currency to another. If you have money in the government debt that you lose. So your billionaires may lose more money than the average person. Right. Okay. That's fascinating. And you are always fascinating. We encourage everyone to go to armstrongeconomics.com and uh, follow what uh, Mr. Armstrong is saying and what his machines are saying, his his computer. Um, and, you know, hey, I look forward to speaking to you all the way up until 2032, and let's just see how it's going. And above all, we do we do pray for peace um, and, and support and help for, I certainly do hope Donald Trump gets in. I think you're right about... Michelle Obama, it is, I think they'll just like, they'll have to put someone in and then it means, you know, another four, four years of, of actual Obama. And I hope everyone's done with him, but in any case, well, um, it's, it, I'm, I'm just very concerned that they're so desperate at this point that they would assassinate Trump because right. they we can't need to pray possibly tolerate, I mean, no war. That's yeah. against everything. Yes. CBDCs. And climate change, um, and I think the UN would hire a hit team for him. You know, right, but, um, right. Oh, poor man. <clears throat> I just unbelievable. I, I hear what you're saying, and I think um, it's it's very worthy of consideration that uh, and and prayer really for our folk that we just need to really cover him for that. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for your time. You're always fascinating, and uh, we'll keep an eye on all that you're doing. ArmstrongEconomics.com, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Armstrong. We'll talk to you again soon. Well, thank you very much and good luck. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. <clears throat> it really is. So, so 2032, a total revamping of everything. Looks like we're going to go through quite a bit before them. You know, uh, what he says is very sobering <clears throat> about the hatred towards Donald Trump. Consider that um, many people saying like they just can't let him run, you know, uh, like how can they? Because it's it's going to he is going to be uh, the demolisher. But there is there there is a prophetic word uh, by King Kim Clement. Was it is that the uh, his name? Yeah, the 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 prophet. And, uh, you know, if you lean to such things that he's going to be in for two terms and, you know, yeah, Kim Clement, um, if God wills him to live, he shall live and he won't be able to get out of that. But once again, we do say, as Mr. Armstrong does, that gold and silver, like that's the currency that 
that will be black market, I believe. And that's where if you, you know, if you get gold and silver, if the money um, has an issue and we see, you know, everything's relative if it all goes down, but, but gold and silver might be that, uh, that special, that special element that will not lose its value, in fact, may go up. And we always tell you that we use uh, Sun, Sun City Silver and it's sovereignize at protonmail.com. And I hope you don't have s trouble spelling that because that is a hard thing to, to spell sovereignize. So just spell sovereign, S O V E R E I G, sovereign with an N I Z E. Sovereign eyes at protonmail.com. Steve Merrill, always help, uh, happy to help you and uh, get some gold and silver in your hands so that uh, on a bad day, um, when things are, you know, all bizarre world, you've got something to trade besides just being beholden to your, to your country. And what does it mean? And how do you bow out of these CBDCs? Um, uh, I know that some leaders in Canada are saying, oh, no, we're, you know, we're not going to be part of that. We're not going to sign up for that. But if the whole world's signed up as a leader, how, how do you stop that? I don't know. That's why we need Trump in as well. Um, so we did show this terror attack. Oh, no, we didn't show the terror attack in Edmonton, right? I have a video on this very, very strange thing uh, that has happened in Edmonton, Alberta, a terror attack there. Take a look. Hey, did you know there was a terrorist attack in Canada the other day? Like, for real, an Islamic terrorist attack by an Islamic man named Bezani Sarvar. Uh, he hasn't been convicted yet, but he's been charged, and frankly, more to the point, he's confessed. Before I do my mission, I want you all to know that I am not a psychopath. I'm just tired of seeing the tyranny and corruption taking over our society and our lives. Leaders, officials, and anybody that has hands into this um, corruption, into this genocide that's going on in Gaza and throughout the world, and inshallah, we will rise against you guys and we'll put you on trial. The political class and also the media chose to, you know, find another way of describing it at, at best, and in, in, in some cases, covering it up at worst. And this was a terror attack. It wasn't covered like a terror attack. Hmm. I'm glad it wasn't covered up because generally these things, for some reason, Lord only knows, sometimes just doesn't make it into the mainstream media. Um, and, you know, they hide who it is. They hide what it's about. I don't think that should be happening. Do you? I don't. So we're not going to hide it. Uh, well done to Ezra Levant covering that. Trudeau visits a mosque in Quebec. Did you see this? So here he is um, as he's leaving. And it's a, uh, it's a band of uh, the uh, pro-Palestinian pro bunch. And they kind of scurry Mr. Trudeau off into his car. <laughs> He's getting it from all sides. Even the people he thought would actually be voting for him. They're, they're running after him. These poor guys standing there. <laughs> oh, man. You know, I mean, Tr Trudeau has been roasted and yelled at from conservatives, uh, PPCers, NDPers across the country, and now by really what would have traditionally been thought of as li liberal voters. They also hate him. All right, um, CPC MP Andrew Shear questioned CBC President Catherine Tate on why CBC is giving bonuses given their dismal performance. And that's uh, kind of a good question, Mr. Shear. Take a look. CBC has almost a half a billion dollars in real estate holdings across the country, big fancy buildings in downtowns across the country. You get over a billion dollars in taxpayers' money to be a television broadcaster, radio broadcaster. When those metrics are down, how do you justify giving performance awards to people whose job it is to increase viewership, to increase ad revenue, to increase trust? Uh, Madam Chair, if I may, I don't agree with the premise. You, you the don't agree ads, no, I don't agree with the premise. 79% of Canadians say that it is important for the country to have a public broadcaster like CBC Radio Canada. 82% say. Who, who commissioned that poll? 
that is those are our public perception surveys that we conduct. Oh, you conducted. Okay. But so, so by, your polling for tells you, you by that using Canadians a like what third you're party doing. Leger uh, survey firm. Yeah. So I'm sorry. I, 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 if, no, if, the ar if the argument is to try to say that we're no longer of value, all I would say is that's not what I hear what, from Canadians. What, what I'm and, asking and about our is the numbers, bonuses. With all due respect, Mr. Oh, when, when you give someone a bonus, and we've just agreed on the metrics that, that, uh, that should be used to judge a, a broadcaster, when those metrics are down, how do you justify giving people, executives, big bonuses when they haven't achieved success by these metrics that we've agreed on? As I pointed out, the metrics that we measure are public and tracked, and they're in all of our reports. So I'm afraid to say that, uh, that trust is down. Trust is down across the entire media section, and it also affects politicians. It also affects all of When you, when you misrepresent right, the truth, me. it does affect the politicians. Excuse me. Defund the CBC. I've chanted that a few times in my lifetime. Um, let's, uh, let's get rid of these uh, lying snakes um, who are bought off, paid off. Uh, they're, they're liberal shows in so many ways. And uh, why would anyone deserve uh, a bonus payment on their already exorbitant paycheck when your performance is so dismal? Apparently, people don't think you're credible, CBC, and they don't watch you anymore, and they don't believe, you know, what uh, the talking points that you're required to give and paid off to give. Like, you, you, you just have no credibility. You don't have character. You don't stand up for the people when all kinds of information was coming out regarding, you know, this last three-year episode of Nightmare that we've been through, which was just a farce. Um, you, you didn't stand up for the people. You didn't give credible facts. You just gave liberal talking points because Trudeau was paying. And you can barely speak against him now. Um, thank God it's starting because it's so bad. And, oh, you see, the tide is turning. He's no longer going to be the one in power, let's hope. Um, so here's a real powerful woman. I absolutely love her. Uh, so Christine Anderson is speaking on the ruination that the Green New Deal is causing in Europe. I'm going to do my best to read it here then, JT, uh, but I'll, I'll kind of start from it, uh, from the beginning, I think, if you can put up her video. I'm going to read it because it's in French, but it's not the people, not the German. farmers who are the, oh, sorry, German. Are you doing the share? Uh, oh, do I need to do the share? Oh, all right. Yes, I can. So let me try to read this. All right, so it says, but it's not the people, not the farmers who are the extremists. The real extremists are sitting on the German government bench. She says, just a second, where'd it go? Okay, hang on, sorry. Proud, uh, okay, sorry. I hope you are here today to look in the mirror and ask yourselves, are you really proud of what you have achieved? Proud of your many proposals and initiatives in this legislature? The guiding thing that Ursula von der Leyen, um, hang on, Ursula von der Leyen said, sent out at the beginning, Green Deal above all else. Yes, it has left deep marks Tears of joy were shed here in this house when you declared a climate emergency and thus created a further basis for making citizens pay, pay, and pay again. I love her. Well, you can see the result in Germany. Our economy is in tatters. A wave of bankruptcies is taking place. At the same time, hundreds of thousands of farmers, holiers, uh, entrepreneurs, and citizens are being fleeced like Christmas geese. The citizens are fed up and are finally taking to the streets. And rightly so, because things can't go on like this. The current policy in Germany is increasingly encroaching on our basic rights. The encroachment of the state into our private something, hang on, private lives is not only questionable, it is dangerous. We are seeing a policy that is directed against its own citizens, a policy of regulation, taxation, and restriction without regard for the needs and rights of citizens. Ladies and gentlemen, this is about far more than just politics. It is about our rights, our freedom, and our future. 
We must work together against this excessive regulation and encroachment on our fundamental rights. We must support a policy that puts the interests of the people at the center. I call on you all to finally stop fleecing the citizens and making them pay for your crazy ideologically and mentally retarded projects. Instead of taking note of criticism of its policies, the German government is calling protesters extremists and enemies of the constitution in order to silence them. But it is not the people, not the farmers who are the extremists. The real extremists are sitting on the German government bench. Criticizing the government is not anti-constitutional, but a government that disregards the people and does not implement their will is anti-constitutional. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. And there she is. All right. So she used strong words, you know, and she's basically saying what you're trying to do is destroy the farmers. You're trying to destroy the people. And this is not okay. And as uh, Martin Armstrong showed, um, he really does feel that it's a depopulation um, tactic that whatever they can do to try to harm us, they're going to do. Um, I don't know if you got that video where it showed, I thought I sent it where it showed that basically all of the drugs we've been taking for all of these years, um, the, the statistics on how many pe people are killed by drugs given to you by the doctors. The doctors prescribe drugs that end up taking people's lives. That's the reality of our whole world. I can't trust anybody. In the U.S., Biden's DOJ steps up its persecution against pro-life activists. Take a look. President Biden's Department of Justice charged six pro-life activists for a peaceful protest outside a Tennessee abortion facility in 2021. Watch this. This is the video of that protest that brought these charges. So they're singing to God there, expressing their faith outside the clinic in the hallway. And now they could face 11 years in prison for that what you are watching. They were found guilty yesterday of conspiracy against rights and violating the freedom of access to clinic entrances. Look at this, the pro-Palestinian protesters, the ones who ripped down a fence that reinforced the barrier outside the White House and hurled water bottles and sticks at officers, not a single arrest. And meanwhile, the protesters who swarmed the home of Supreme Court justices last year, which is a crime, the Washington Post even says that, zero arrest. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, it's funny what's what's criminal these days. Um, standing up for your country, like our four political prisoners in Canada that are have not been given a fair and speedy trial, and uh, they remain in jail in Alberta. Uh, James Sowry has been taken off to jail. Basically, he ran over a you know a pylon. Um, and then we have, as we had on yesterday, which was, uh, really terrific, Chris Barber, um, who he and, uh, Tamara are still in a very long court suit that makes them possibly facing 10 years in jail for fighting with the people of Canada, standing, really singing O Canada a lot in a three week period back in February of 2022. Lindsey Graham questions Twitter president Linda Yacirino, yeah, Yacirino, on whether she supports the Earn It Act. Take a look. Do you support the Earn It Act? God, uh, we strongly support the collaboration to raise industry no, practices no, 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 to no. Do you support prevent the Earn It CSAM. Act? Do you support the Earn It in, in English? Do you support the Earn It Act? Yes or no? We don't need double speed We look here. forward to supporting and continue our conversations. Okay, so I as think you that can is see, no. but you have, but you have, you have taken 
The reason the Earn Act is important, you can actually lose your liability protections when children are exploited and you didn't use best business practices. See, the Earn It Act means you have to earn liability protection. You're given it no matter what you do. So to the members of this committee, it is now time to make sure that the people who are holding up the signs can sue on behalf of their loved ones. Nothing will change until the courtroom door is open to victims of social media. Hmm. And on the trail of that, um, Senator Marsha Blackburn nails a squirming Mark Zuckerberg on his company's view, uh, view of children as a product. One of the things that really concerns me is that you referred to your young users in terms of their lifetime value of it being roughly $270 per teenager. And each of you should be looking at these kids. Their t-shirts they're wearing to say, today say, I'm worth more than $270. We've got some standing up in those t-shirts. Now, 42 states are now suing you because of features that they consider to be addictive that you are pushing forward. And in the emails that we've got from 2021 that go from August to November, there is the staff plan that is being discussed in Antigone Davis, Nick Clegg, Cheryl Sandberg, Chris Cox, Alex Schultz, Adam Masseri, are all on this chain of emails on the well-being plan. And then we get to one, Nick did email Mark for emphasis, to emphasize his support for the package, but it sounds like it lost out to various other pressures and priorities. See, this is what bothers us. Children are not your priority. Children are your product. Children, you see, as a way to make money. Hmm. And you know, what's really shocking to me is the amount of uh, uh, basically links to uh, sex trafficking and child pornography and different things, kids exposed to things on Facebook. I recently read an article about that. And I'm just so surprised because it's like, um, you know, I don't use Facebook much now for anything other than, you know, posting um, posting the, the things we're doing because, you know, I've, I've lost some understanding of the ethics of that organization. I, I've lost some trust in it, but what is going on when kids are not, I don't know, protected on an online platform such as that is such a almost simple, you know, thing as, you know, Facebook, it's where you connect with friends, loved ones, uh, you know, you can kind of creep and see what, what's, what someone else has been up to. If you haven't seen them for a while, you may not necessarily need to call them. You can just go on their Facebook and see, oh, they've had a birthday and family events and such going on. And it seems like it should be a safe platform. And yet for many children, it has not been. Um, thanks for being with us today. I hope you've enjoyed Martin Armstrong and all that uh, he brought with him. My website is laurelin.tv. So blessed and just so, um, I'm so thrilled that there's a way that we can connect and tell the truth. I, I find this to be a real honor that we have uh, an ability, we have a tool and a way in which to communicate the truth, to get good information out, to have good dialogue, to discuss, um, to reason together. The word of God says, come let us reason together. Um, I, I think we've lost that ability to reason um, meaning we're so afraid of conflict in Canada in particular. We're so afraid of it that we don't know how to do it. If someone else gets mad, one of the biggest mistakes that people make is they get mad themselves. You shouldn't get mad if somebody else gets mad because you bring up something that's important. Learn a really mentally healthy person can withstand when others are not in agreement with you. So when they come at you and they say, oh, well, you know, we don't, we don't think that's right. We hate that you believe that or whatever. You could just, you know, you could say, well, what, what is it that concerns you about my belief? What, what is it? Let's talk about it. And let me try to understand and then 
after they say what they're mad about, then just, you know, say it back to them. Say, so what I hear you saying is you don't like the fact that I believe that men have to be biological men and women have to be biological women. That's a difficulty for you. Okay, well, tell me how you see it, okay? And then maybe have some, some facts, some data in your arsenal that you're able to simply present. And sometimes it means you just say one more sentence. Well, I'm sorry, I believe that women are, I think that we're XX and men are XY. I'm not totally certain, JT. I always get those two confused after I don't like say it. I know we have it on a shirt, right, Dominique? What is it? Um, text me. Um, so, uh, you know, and, and then you just say, that's what I think it is. And we can agree to disagree. No anger. Let's not have a big fight. Let's not not go to each other's, you know, houses for dinner anymore. Can we not just reason together? Come, let us reason together. Let's discuss. Let's put forward what the Bible says, you know, if someone will listen. And if they don't want to listen, you know, Maybe there's no more that can be said, in all honesty. Do you know, I was challenged one day when I read uh, an article, somebody saying Jesus never begged one person to follow him. He never begged. He gave the truth, and he said, you get to choose me or reject me, but he never begged them or forced or used any kind of coercion. And um, I, I believe that's the way that we should things and that we should have we should have dialogue and most of all that we would let people know that they're Christians by our love and that's what we want to do and so when you go to our website at laurelin.tv <laughs> we have a donate button there <laughs> drive JT crazy because <laughs> uh, I, I just go off on a tangent and then I come back to the website okay so you'll see there, there's a little donate button. And when you donate, you're able to, to give a one-time um, donation to help us, or you could become a monthly partner. You can give an anonymous donation. You can give a large or small amount, and you get an income tax receipt because we bring the power of the gospel into mainstream, into the news items of the day and into the crisis, quite frankly, that we're facing today. So thank you for that. You can also send an e-transfer to Laura Lynn Live at protonmail.com. And we appreciate that, you know, if, if you like watching this broadcast, understand, you know how they talked about all that money? Andrew Shear was talking about all that money that CBC gets. Um, we don't get none of that. We pay for it. We pay for everything we have to do. Uh, we pay for it. And so the only way for us to be able to tell the truth is for wonderful, generous people to say, I believe that's important and I'm going to donate. There is our box number, PO Box 48184, New Westminster, B3M0A7, if you prefer to donate um, through the mail. Some people still love that mail. I like getting mail. I don't, I, I rarely send much through the mail now, like uh, sometimes some thank you cards and things like that. But um, yeah, it's funny how mail, we, and you can even get your income tax receipts through the mail now. So, you know, the government's making it easier for us. Aren't they wonderful? I just love them. All right. So um, I wanted to read to you from Galatians 1 today as we close, verse 6. It says, I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you to live in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Paul was saying, I'm really shocked that after understanding the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ, what, what he did for you, how much he loves you, how much he wants to heal your life, forgive you of your sins, bring you into your greatest destiny that he created you for. It's interesting that we can live an entire life under a, a potential plan of what God wanted you to do and be and, and how he wanted you to live. We could live in a potential of all of that, but never actually walk in the calling that God intended because we reject him. 
because we go off and serve other gods, whether that's your television or, you know, things that you spend the most time doing. God has reserved the right of relationship and the choice of relationship as being given to you. Whether you want him or not, whether you choose to see him as the son of God or you choose to serve pagan gods or believe in the universe. The universe is telling me that I should do this. It's always funny when they say that. Is the universe, does it have a character? Like, uh, is, it, um, is it female or male? Is the universe a person? Is it a being that loves you? Or does this universe just care for you? How do you define the universe? Here's the thing. God and God alone defines himself. All of these people say, well, I think this is what it is. I think that God is, you know, it's a feeling. He's in the crystals. I always have crystals everywhere in my house because I know the crystals are speaking to me and the crystals are helping me to feel good about myself. And uh, crystals, crystals, or, you know, you go to the Ouija board or you go and have your tea leaves read or your fortune told by someone who potentially is actually, if they're not a fraudster, because there's lots of those, but they're potentially getting their information from demons. Because there's only two sources that are speaking to us. It's a godly source or a demonic source. So when somebody is giving you your fortune telling and they're not ascribing to the name of Jesus Christ, where are they getting their intel? They're getting their intel from demons. And demons aren't stupid. They can predict things. Um, the devil himself would be a very wise being. And, and in fact, you know, God does not advise us to go up against the devil by ourselves. You know, the Lord rebuke you, Satan. May God deal with him. I am protected by God. I want to listen to God and I want to put him as the head of my life. I'm astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you to live in the grace of Christ. Is there anyone listening to me today and you know that you've kind of deserted the God that you know is right? You don't give him much attention. You don't read the word. You don't pray. You've forgotten about him. You don't think about him much. You just live your life and, you know, you curse the ground when things go wrong and you celebrate when things go right, but you're not really including him in your life. I wonder today if you would consider that there is a God who absolutely loves you, who wants to be a part of your life, and maybe you have deserted him as of late. Would you consider completely changing that right now? God bless. See you tomorrow. You know, it's not easy to deliver the truth of what our sick world is doing, but for some of us, we feel that we have no choice. Because if we are silent about these abominable things, then we are letting evil go unchecked, and we cannot do that. For those of you wonderful people who are writing me and are sharing your encouragement, I am deeply grateful. Thank you for all the letters that you've been sending. Thank you for the donations and the support. I found out that in order to speak the truth, you have to be strong. If you would go to my website at www.laurelin.tv, you'll find all of the ways that you can contact me. Remember, my friends, all is well. All is well. Thanks for joining me.